Oh, hello again. I'm Devin, this is Gemma, who I recently discovered will only work for cheese. Gemma, on your feet. We're working on stuff that'll make shooting videos easier, hopefully. Actually, this baby goes to her first day of puppy school today. Are you excited? But that's not why we're here. We are here because we just got Gemma's Embark DNA back. I'm so excited. It's just, it's so cool, one, that we can test DNA and find out breeds of mixed dogs. And two, it did run a test for, I don't know science, and I don't know dog science, but it ran a test for all these possible traits that she could have that could lead her to having problems in the future. See, I, I, I less than don't know science. But she was clear, 181 things, indicators, genome things, that they tested for, and she was clear of all of them, which, you know, good news, huh? But now, now we get to find out what this little cocktail puppy's made of. I'll start off with what I think she is. So see this floof, this floof here. This makes me think chow. It makes me think um, Shiva or Akita, just like the floof around her head. She also has this like built-in bandana cape sort of thing going on with her fur. Or like all that right there. This is like different textured fur. It's very interesting, I don't know what it is. She's got a white tip on the end of her tail, which makes me think she's part fox. The shelter thought she was a Kishun? Kishun? Kishound? I don't know. Kishound. Those little fluffy, dark black and gray dogs. They thought she was part Kishun and part English Shepherd, which I see. She's smaller. She's almost 40 pounds at eight months. So she's smaller than, say, a German Shepherd and a Chow, which is the other thing that's kind of been floating around. What I think is in there floating around is Corgi, which like probably not. I don't know. Something about her says Corgi to me. She always surprises me with how long she is. Girl, are you excited too? You are pumped. Here, do you want one of these? We got these from the Pup Mom crate and we're so close to being out and I really, I mean, I want more. Do you want more? We'll get more of these. Are we ready? Do we want to look? Can you just chill right there and let's see what you are? So I have not opened the email yet. Are you ready to find out what you are? Okay, we opened it. Gemma's breed results are now ready. After taking a comprehensive look at over 200,000 genetic markers and comparing Gemma's DNA to our extensive panel of over 250 common and rare dog breeds and village dog populations, plus wolves and coyotes. No foxes though, huh? We've built her breed mix from the ground up. Piece by piece, she's army crawling away. Chromosome by chromosome, and we've assembled the most detailed ancestry analysis for your dog. Explore the breed ancestry section to learn more about Gemma's breed and trace ancestry back to the dawn of dogs. Oh my gosh, it's gonna make me open it on my computer. Are you ready, Gemma? Gemma got a bath yesterday and is the cleanest she's been in months. And I'm not gonna say that this video is the only reason why I gave her a bath, but I will say that this video is the only reason I put on makeup. Gemma, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Gemma's breeds are, ooh, she's a lot of something. That's a lot of chow. Wow, what? Wait, what? Pomeranian? Oh my gosh. Stafford Terrier, German Shepherd, Pomeranian? Pitbull. Oh my gosh. That's bonkers. Gemma, you're part Pitbull. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that. 52% chow. Wow. Maybe this helps explain a little why she looks or acts the way she does. The proud independent spirit that some call cat-like. I've been saying that she's a cat. Often aloof and suspicious of strangers, not suspicious of strangers. The Chow Chow may not be a cuddly buddy, but for the right person, they are a fierce, loyal companion. She is not cuddly, but we're working on it. Blue tongue and lips aren't the only thing unique to Chow Chows. So she actually doesn't have any sort of color on her lips or her tongue or anywhere, which 
threw me off from the chow chow. Gemma's in the corner crying. She's like, I did not know that I was 50% chow. So she's 52.4% chow. 19.8% American pit bull terrier. That's crazy. I love pit bulls, so I'm psyched. 6.6% Pomeranian. 3.4% German Shepherd. 3.4% American Staffordshire Terrier. 14.4% Super Mutt. <laughs> Gemma, did you know that a small amount of your DNA is Chihuahua. This is so fun. I think this is fantastic. I don't get why everybody wouldn't do this. Chow Chow, the distinctive looking dog breed, has a proud, independent spirit that some describe cat like. Oh, I already read this. American Pitbull Terrier. It originated from the British Isles and descends from the Mastiff type dog introduced to England in antiquity. The breed was brought over to the United States by English immigrants in the 1800s. I just had panicked that that wasn't recording and quickly became one of the most popular and widespread breeds there. Pomeranian. <laughs> the Pomeranian is a cocky, animated companion with an extroverted personality. She's got the extroverted personality, that's for sure. German Shepherd dogs are confident, courageous dogs with a keen sense of smell and notable intelligence. She's very smart, though she doesn't always like to prove that. They're true utility dogs. Their versatility combined with their loyal companionship has them consistently listed as one of the most popular breeds in the United States. American Staffordshire Terriers are powerful but playful dogs that are both loyal and affectionate with their owners. So she's got that aloofness of a chow, that's for sure. What do we think? Would you ever expect that this would be part pit bull? I just think this thing is so cool. <laughs> I just got like 12 text messages just freaking out about the fact that we have her breeds. I literally cannot believe, look at your little ears. So no part fox, which you know, is very surprising. This is so cool. The breed colors, you can see which part of their chromosomes belong to which breed of dog, which like, I don't understand, but like that's cool. And then there's, oh, there's literally so much more that we can look at. Family tree, her parents were a chow chow mix and a mixed breed, just like complete mix. Grandparents were pit bull, bull terrier, and chow mixes. One of her grandparents was a full bred chow chow. And then one of her great grandparents <laughs> was a Pomeranian mix. So mix matches are the breed types that are similar to Gemma's. So there's someone on here who's been, who has an 85% match to Gemma. Oh, that's so cute. Maternal haplotype. Through Gemma's mitochondrial DNA, we can trace her mother's ancestry back to where dogs and people first became friends. This map helps you visualize the roots that her ancestors took to your home. Their story is described below by the map. That's cool. I don't really understand what I'm looking at, but it's still pretty cool. In the paternal haplotype, oh, so this makes sense. This I do understand. So all dogs have two sex chromosomes, female dogs have two X chromosomes, and male dogs have one X and one Y. So they can't analyze the Y chromosome because she's a girl and she doesn't have the Y chromosome. So there's no paternal haplotype on here. But then we can go to traits. Explore the genetics behind your dog's size, appearance, and genetic diversity. Coat modifiers. Hidden patterning. More likely to have pattern fur. She kind of does. Fawn sable coat color pattern. No dark mask or grizzled facial fur patterns. She does actually. Her whole right here is all um, black. She's under my bed now. I can't even look at her. Hey, Gemma, come here. Let's look at you while we read this. You want another salmon? Yeah, she does. Coat length, likely short or mid-length coat. Yeah, I mean, it's like, not not long. Shedding, likely heavy seasonal shedding. Yes, I would say so. Coat texture, likely straight coat. Very unlikely to be hairless. Likely not albino. But if you take it, you're gonna leave. Body, body size one, two, four, and five are larger. Body size three, I don't know what that means, but maybe it will explain. Predicted adult weight, 52 pounds. That's not that big, you need to stay pretty small. Oh, this is interesting. Body size three, gene STC2. This is one of several genes that influence the size of a dog. The result of AA for this gene is associated with a smaller body size, and the result of TT is associated with a larger body size, and her result was a TA, so that's the medium, I guess. This is so cool. 
I'm such a dork for this type of stuff. They have a um, Facebook page. And I spent so long reading other people's results for their dogs. I just think it's so cool. 18% inbreeding, you know, gonna happen. You're not that inbred. That's something you can only say to your dog. Appetite, normal, food motivation, kind of. Uh, normal altitude tolerance, cool. And then relatives. She actually matches with like a lot of dogs for relatives. That's so cool. That's really cool. She actually has first cousins on here. We'll have to look them up, huh? All right, that's enough. I will, her hair is floating everywhere. I'm so excited. Now I'll actually be able to tell people what she is when they ask me and watch their shocked faces when I tell them that she's 52% chow and 20% pitbull. Cause you're a ferocious pitbull. Cause pitbulls are always so ferocious, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Hello, this is Editing Devin now. I had a couple things that I wanted to add. The thing that really gets me pumped about having the breed information now is it's going to help me understand her so much more, especially the chow, especially because she's like more than 50% chow. The information on her breeds is going to help me so much in understanding the way she acts and the way she learns and the way she reacts to things and I think it's going to make training her a lot easier on both of our parts because I'm going to understand her limitations and her strengths and she's going to have someone training her that understands her limitations and her strengths. I'm the biggest proponent for the DNA test. I shout it from the rooftops now. I think it's so much fun. Why not, honestly? And um, it just helps you know your dog a little bit better. I'm just the biggest proponent of it. Go get your Embark. The test can be a little pricey. It's normally $189, but if it's something you're interested and you can't quite swing the $189, I do have a link for $40 off. So just reach out to me. You can message me on my Instagram, at Devin Padley, or on Gemma's Instagram, at what a Gemma with three M's and I will send you the link because I want everyone to do it. Let me know what you think. Try it out. Let me know what your dogs are. I have so much fun on their Facebook page for DNA breed discussion. Um, it's, it's just a good time. Go check it out.